Today, we'll talk about breadboards. These little guys are going to be a huge part of your life as an engineering student, hobbyist, or even professional engineer if you do any kind of large-scale hardware prototyping. The basic idea is you can connect parts together, leaded parts, without having to solder them together. Therefore, it's highly configurable and non-destructive. It's much easier and visually cleaner to use a breadboard rather than try to solder the leads all together. It gets to be kind of a mess. The rows on here are all connections. So these are connected, these are connected, the columns are not connected. Don't feel bad if you have to look this up a couple times. It eventually becomes intuitive. I had to look it up several times early on. For the more visual among us, I pulled the plastic backing off of one of these. As you can see, connection, one big piece of metal, connection, one big piece of metal, not connected. If I pop one of these out, you can see that all these little holes go straight into these little metal clips and that's how you make connections. So that's why it's kind of a bad idea to put multiple wires into the same breadboard hole because it will really only grasp the largest wire. You might get a faulty connection. Most things like leaded capacitors and resistors go in just fine. Um, sometimes resistors like this have a really skinny leg and they don't make a perfect connection. If that's the case, just barely tin the entire leg using a soldering iron and a little bit of solder. Just, just a little bit of extra solder on there, just to give it something to grab onto. Most ICs or switches like this, again, through hole only, will go in just fine. You just wanna make sure that you really push the body all the way to the breadboard to make sure that those clips can grab onto those legs. You will likely see a lot of these around when you start using breadboards, um, but it kind of gives you a rat nesty look. So be sure to change that for shorter, more precisely bent wires when you go to turn it in. It'll really impress your professors. Okay, so let's do a really quick example here. Um, obviously not using the row that I just pulled out. So I have a switch in the middle. These legs are not connected when it's raised. When you press it, all the legs get connected. So what I'm gonna do is bring in power, that's my red clip, into this row over here. So this entire row is now seeing power. I'll take the positive lead of an LED, put the positive lead in that row, and move down into that switches row down a little bit lower. Now that is connected into the switch. The switch is not connected. When you press it, it is connected. And I can put another LED, the positive leg from that terminal, down here to another row. And then we will connect that row to ground. So no soldering involved. When I turn this on, I have it to six volts and 20 milliamps. Make sure you have a current limit on this or you will blow up your LEDs. Good, nothing happened. Press the button, they light up. You complete the circuit. No circuit, circuit, no soldering required. That's the beauty of a breadboard.